Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Roman. Good, Good morning. morning. Hey, Saint Happy, Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. All right. Yay. <laughs> another, another, another year. And today we're going to be talking about what is did Saint did uh, Saint Patrick did he have a dog? What is it all about? What is the history of Saint Patrick's Day, and do how come? What are the different breeds that are involved? So we're going to start with actually I'm going to share my screen here. <clears throat> Roman found that Saint Patrick's Day his way with the Irish Wolfhounds. So Roman, do you want to share with us about what is the story of Saint Patrick? Well, I wasn't there. But oh, I, love okay. wolf, I, oh. I love wolf dogs. So um, I think it was about um, 400 years back. Um, St. Patrick Patrick was back then about 16 years old. And he was captured by Irish pirates. And um, the story goes that they actually forced him to take care of sheep. And he ended up being... Um, in the mountains with those sheep for a couple of years, and he basically become one with those wolf dogs. So one day he had this weird dream at night, and so he had this imagination, or his like an angel dog came to him and told him that he should go to a sheep that's about 200 miles away and 200 miles a long way to walk, right? And so he went there, totally wet from the rain and you know, totally messed up. He arrived to the ship. And he came on board on that ship. And what they did basically is they transported wolf dogs on that ship. The whole ship was full of wolf dogs. And he was right there, the best thing. Now, long story short, the ship crashed. And the ship went down. And... People knew that he was good with dogs so they asked him if he can do anything about it and help them out so he actually prayed to his god and voila here it came that everybody was safe and yep that's kind of like the story started becoming more a tradition now why other dogs are being involved and we don't see so many wolf dogs as um classic dog of St. Patrick's? I don't know, but it was very interesting. Yeah, and, and, and they do, there are certain types of dogs that are considered I, Irish dog breeds. Yep. Okay, and we're going to, uh, we're going to show those. So here we've got the Irish, the Irish setter. setter. Okay. <laughs> I love those guys. They're very yeah, pretty. And, and you know, for some Me reason, too. people say that Irish setters um, are kind of lanky and they can't find their way home and they're not intelligent. And I don't find that at all. What are the traits of, of an Irish setter that are, that are, they're very loving. We know that. Well, first of all, they're hunting dogs and they're setters. And they maybe not be considered the smartest dogs around the block, but they are very good in what they're doing. And I would say I would like to have one if um, had more time for them. But they're really dogs who need a lot of care. They have a long coat. They are prone to ear infections, and otherwise. They're, they're great dogs. Okay. This is a terrier. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, we know that guy. Irish wolf dog. Yep. yep. Who, what kind is this now? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know all the breeds. There's so many breeds. <laughs> Well, these are the dogs that are in the that are in the Irish uh, dog breeds, right? Okay, and that's Charlie in the background. Hush, Charlie, mommy's on on the show. <laughs> okay. All right. So if we move down here, I think we're going to be able to find out who these were. No, I guess not. No, right? Yeah. Let's see here now. Let's go this way. There. The Kerry Beagle, that's what that is. Oh. 
the Kerry Blue Terrier, the Soft Coated Wheaton Terrier. Yeah, we have one of those. <laughs> Irish Money. Red, Red and White Setter. Now, for some reason, that almost looks a little bit like a Cavalier, doesn't doesn't she? Yeah, it does. And here's the Glen of Imal. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Glen of oh. Imal, have you heard of that? No. It's listed on the uh, American Kennel Club as a breed. Yeah. That's all right. I know. Yeah. That's all I know about it. This one is the Irish Water Spaniel. You like to take that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And this one is the Irish Terrier. Yeah. Okay. So see, we had them all right. Okay. So now when we look at the breeds and everything, uh, when around the world, I think that a lot of groups are celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And I did not know that they also celebrate their dogs on, on St. Patrick's Day. They bring them to the parades and that. Mm -hmm. So here, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at what's happening around the world. <laughs> <laughs> These are some of the pet friendly ones in Dublin. Of course, naturally in Dublin, they, they're going to have a big parade. Right. And, yeah. And uh, in New York, they have a parade and a lot of people bring their dogs. And the, well, the funny part was that the first St. Patrick's parade was in Florida. Oh, it was? Yeah, because... Um, and actually was organized by the um, Spanish huh. settlers. And then it started becoming kind of a thing. And then it went up north and then it spread all over the world. Uh. So the, the Spanish people who went in, in Florida back then um, started with the St. Patrick's Day in yeah. memory. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I didn't know that they do face stickers for St. Patrick's Day, too. Huh. I suppose that's yep. logical. Then in Chicago. Everything is Atlanta. green. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta. They died the river in Chicago, just by the way. Let's, let, right, yeah. Let the audience know. That if you're not color. familiar, the, the, uh, it, there's a plumber union, mostly Irish, uh, of Irish descendants. And they start putting a dye in the river some years ago. And that became a tradition every spring and March around the St. Patrick's Day or it's on St. Patrick's Day. They spread the, the, the dye in the river and the river crossing the city of Chicago turned green, as you see on the picture there. <laughs> yeah, right. And that lasts for a few weeks. Huh. Okay. And that's it for that one. So... I thought that what what would be really, really fitting is for us to have a video from one of our very, very favorites, Munchkin. I don't know why Charlie is barking, folks. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He wants to be on the Maybe show. He wants to say that he's uh, Irish, too, and he yeah, wants to be right. on the show. So this, this is Munchkin, and I think we want to add him. We'll do a live screen, and then we will share. <laughs> This pot of gold. <laughs> I hope there's no chocolate in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So uh, next we want to talk about dog safety. A lot of times at, uh, at this time, people will do things that are not very good. So Roman, maybe you can help us go through this. Well, definitely clear. St. Patrick's Day, lots of stuff happening and we have parties in the house or we have parties out of the house and we leave the dog in the house and leave there. And since it's one of the first kind of like big events that are kind of mask free, um, we need to kind of keep our safety sensors up um, lots of noises people will be loud and loud music will be played so we want to make sure that dogs are safe in the house some dogs have still separation anxiety 
and some dogs get very weird about noises. And then the other thing that we have a problem with is with alcoholic beverages. I was, I was just going to comment on that. People think it's cute to give their dog green beer. And uh, that seems to be a real, a real no, big issue. No. Yeah. If and you then, want to share a drink with your dog, water. <laughs> welcome, welcome to have a chicken soup, right? Okay. And you don't have to drink it with with your dog, right? But fresh water does it fine. Um, yeah, you can give him cucumber water if you want to stick with green. Okay. Uh huh. Um, in general, green fruits are okay for dogs, and. Um, you can also they're healthy as well not green peppers forget the peppers okay i'm putting a link to this in in the in the comments folks my sister or dog was in love with broccoli mm -hmm. he can mm -hmm. he can eat broccoli like a maniac he, uh, she presented a, a stock of broccoli, jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah for well, more. That, that's a good thing. My, my, one of my dogs used to eat pickles or cucumbers, I should Cucumber. say. Not pickles, cucumbers, yeah. yeah. So anyway, now shamrocks or the, the um, four-leaf clover, as we yeah, call we it. Yeah, we have to be careful with plants in the house anyway. Right. So under, un, unless they're not on a, a harmful plant list, I would not have them in the house. You can find in, in your phone several apps that tells you exactly what plant it is by taking a picture of it. So um, I would be very careful. Okay. So, yeah, I think one thing we should be very careful that if we take our dogs outside in public, making sure the dog is up to date, making sure if your dog is a little bit more reactive, why not wearing a green muzzle, right? Why not wearing a nice tag so everybody knows if your dog gets loose who the dog belongs to and be aware that dogs outside on the street, there will be noise, there will be sounds, there will be music, things going on so dogs may get scared on the road. Right, right. And yeah. Yes, you can wear your dog a jacket, but be careful. Sometimes the jackets are not a good fit for your dog and dog will may not feel comfortable about it and kind of swing a tantrum. Well, what about outfits like this? I mean, <laughs> yeah, don't, let's don't don't ask me that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I come on, here's, Roman. Here's yeah. a cute one. Kiss me. I'm not a rich. green party pooper, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, we saw that one, and then here the shamrock. See, now when people put their their animals in that, they they can get their paw their paws caught in long skirts right, like right, that, right, right. and uh, hurt their yep. I think many dogs look funny in those, you know, coats, but not all the dogs feel comfortable in them. Uh -huh. So dogs have a sense of pride and some dogs have also sensitivities because of allergies. So having another coat on top of their skin may feel very uncomfortable and your dog may respond like reactively towards your hands if you try to put their shirt on. And plus these are just very inexpensive coats. So they don't have this fancy, uh, easy way in and easy way out options. So um, you may struggle with your dog. So don't push it. I would recommend not pushing with those clothes. And if you put something on your dog's head, some <sighs> dogs may get hurt because these are plastic rings and not always fit for dogs. So making sure you're not putting the dog any harm um, around those because they have these little needles on it. So they stick to our hair. And of course, don't let the dog chew on it. That's obviously, I mean, most of you right. know that. I'm just saying for those who don't know, don't let things hang around with those little pills and chains and, you know, fancy chocolate and gold gold medallions, chocolate cookies. Keep it safe from the dog, just like you did with Thanksgiving and just you did with all the other festive holidays. Right, right. So, Roman, what's wrong with this, this picture? Yeah, definitely wrong picture. Okay. Um, I would say dyeing your dog's hair is not something I would recommend um, for several reasons. A, some of them are easily washable and you can wash them out with a spray bottle. Um, but again, the dog is going through a lot of stress. He needs to stand still. You put him on a groomer. It's an additional issue. Wear him a jacket. Yeah, right. You know, there was one time... 
I have to say that I did. I uh, you did that. Me. Yeah. No, uh, no I. Uh, You're forgiven. No, no. no, what I did was I had Charlie. Uh, no, yeah, it was Charlie. I had him, his tail, his paws, and his ears, tipped with blue and green or whatever it was and supposedly it wasn't supposed to harm the dog or anything it was a type of dye that they said is is made for dogs is there such a thing as dyes made for dogs yeah yeah like, there, there are but you have to be very careful everybody can claim it but you will not it? find those guys to <laughs> i would say if you want to do something like that go professional ask your groomer for um, recommendations and let the groomer do the job and don't mess with this. Okay. Okay. So now, um, you know, we really don't, didn't have a whole lot for, for the show today. Uh, we, we decided that we're going to do this, but we did want to let you know that we've been working on uh, having a group that is uh, in the Ukraine in the Russian area, and we want to give a shout out to them. This is a group called Breaking the Chain Documentaries. And we're going to put a link in there because we would like for you to go over and uh, like their page and follow them because we are going to have them on. We're working on the details of having them on the show for next week. So far, they have been documenting what they're doing either by video or pictures, and they're saving hundreds and hundreds of dogs from shelters. Now, these are not the people that have uh, taken their animals with them. These are the ones that were left behind because the shelters were either being uh, bombed or, or and, and they were left behind. So these guys are real heroes as far as we're concerned, and we're real, mm -hmm. real happy about them. They, they've got a lot of information of the things that they have done and the people that they have saved and some of the rooms that have gone on. So please feel free to I just put it into the, uh, the comments here. But so now let's talk a little bit about what is happening in the Ukraine and what does happen to the animals in wartime. It's uh, it's really sad to think about it, but the good news is, is that the people in Ukraine, I see all these pictures of them taking their animals. They're, they're you know, the old saying that, oh, I, I can't go into that apartment because, uh, or I have to leave my apartment because it doesn't allow dogs, so they'll give up the dog instead. Here are people that are giving up their homes and everything, and they are, uh, from their heart, they are taking because they feel their animals are part of their family what's your what, what have you been uh seeing on this roman well I've, I've been in several countries and several continents and one thing that i notice is that in in most european countries and i would say uh, ukraine now it's in europe before it wasn't but there's always a special relationship with dogs the the, the relationship with dogs it's healthier than we have on our side of the continent and um people are have house dogs they don't have pets they're part of the family and they have their their healthy relationships and you will see that people leave the house they take all the animals with them okay they organize themselves they have backup plans and of right. course europe have seen a lot of wars we kind of know what's going on like first war second world war you know um you know this other you know in, invasive wars that happen around um after the um the east union kind of collapsed um romanian bulgarian um czechoslovakia poland all these people are really dog oriented and so they are they they have care systems in place so of course they will take the dogs with them. It's like no questions asked. Mm -hmm. But of course, in a war zone, you cannot predict everything. And those dogs who are in shelters, because still we have stray dogs and free roaming dogs and people who die and people who are in, disabled and cannot take the dogs with them. That system has to be supported as well. <clears throat> and so, yeah, we need to help. We need to help them. One thing though, I would say 
there is no need for some organizations to go beyond that and says, oh, we're going to bring them here. I think that's not a good idea. Okay. Bringing the dogs from there here is not the solution. Helping the dogs being kept there is the solution. We have enough dogs that need homes. We have enough organizations here to try to place the dog in a home. We don't need organizations to spend thousands of dollars to get there and bring them back here and causing those dogs extremely trauma through the transportation, being so many hours on the plane, and then have to go through specific processes to be able to stay in the country. So right. I, I would not well, I, I would imagine that the, the thing that we would really recommend is to get them out of harm's way first mm -hmm. and whatever that takes so if that's into a different another town into someplace else but there are a lot of people that are saying that they're going to go to ukraine and i see all of these nonprofit organizations coming up and, and saying fund it fund it and what i'm not getting is what is it they're funding so are these scams are these uh you know i would some, say some, they're scams you know, I'm, I'm not a financial department, but I would say we have to be very careful where we finance and what we support. Right. Because yeah. many will show drama pictures and, and you know, fear, fear porn and only to get to your wallet. Right. Fear, and even fear if they porn. Do something, like yeah. even if they do a little thing, yeah. like supporting one little rescue, they can say, they can claim, I will help that rescue. Right. Okay? Well, right, and the rest of the money we're gonna donate somewhere else. Right, I, I would like to make some comment um, based on the news report, just based on what we can see and uh, observe on television. There's two things going on. Some there's a refugee, and some of them were able or are able to bring their pet with them. But my understanding, based on other uh, news report, is most of the people cannot take their pet with them uh, and in the train, right, right, wherever they go. So there's a, and there's a third factor is in town where the, the there's bombing going on, a, you know, bombardment done, the noise uh, and some dog get really freaked out and become uh, unruly and kind of get loose. And then you have that third situation where you have dog becoming a stray dog because they get uh, scared, they get baffled, lost, separated. right? Buzz, and they they get they lost their bearing and they lost their orientation, and they try to run away from that sound and that bombardment. And so that's think, three think different. Think Fourth of July times ten. Oh yeah, and more because uh, it's in your it's in your neighbor, it's in the next building. Uh, the the fact that the Russian are bombarding apartment complex, hospital, and place where the people are uh, living it's 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 inhumane to start with. But the by beside, uh, we're talking about dogs. So yes, we have hundred percent concern for the human. So that's for sure. But we are addressing what also happened to the dog in the context there. So, uh, right. yeah, dogs refused, uh, rejected at, at the, in, that the uh, refugee transit. They can be refused on train. It can be refused on the plane. They can be refused on the bus. So they are left behind. So the owner take their dog all the way to a point of boarding either a bus, a train, or a plane. And they, they told, no, you cannot take your dog with us. The second situation is a, a refugee leave in the hurry because the building is in flame. And they get out and they don't know where the dog is. Where they the realize dog went. they don't have him, right? Right, it's gone. So that's the second situation. And the third situation is where dog uh, have, been for, uh, have been willingly abandoned and they are roaming in city where they are under fire and these dogs are completely di disoriented and there's some organization trying to round up the dog and bringing some comfort and giving them some shelter <coughs> and protection that's the three different things going on about people <coughs> asking for money uh we have the first the first flag is 
is there a track record to that organization? Did they just pop out like two weeks ago out of nowhere and they ask for money? So if they have a track record, that's reassuring to know that this organization exists for many years. It's they just not come out of the nowhere on that day at that moment. So that's a thing to verify when organizations are asking money to rescue dog and things like that. Make sure they have a track record and they have uh, they are going to do what they're saying they are going to do with the money. So that's my uh, comment on the situation with dogs, which is a very sad situation with human. Uh, it's crazy. It's a genocide. Yeah. And you know, you know what I what bothers me is if I've envisioned myself if I was there and I have my dog, I have my family with me, and now I'm told I can't take my dog with, it's almost like, well, then I don't want to go. And and there's that decision that you have to make because if they say you can't take that dog, what really happens? Do you just say, okay, here, and then what do they do with the dog? That's that's where a lot of confusion is. Does anyone know? Do you know, Roman? Where where what do they do with the dog, or do they just let it? <clears throat> well, right now we're having about fifty thousand stray dogs in Ukraine, of fifty thousand animals, to be more correct. Okay, and they are in shelters. And some of them are destroyed and some of them, you know, need to be evacuated. So that's a, that's a trickery thing, right? And I would say we need to be very careful. These people and those organizations need food there. Now, we have financial issues. The, the banking is kind of complicated right now because it's very careful how money is being moved around and who's getting that money you cannot just donate money to a bank account because somebody told you it's fine and what is this money going to their own hands it would be part of the disaster right and so these mm -hmm. are things we need to mind and i would rather go to surrounding countries and support their rescues who take dogs in like poland for example good idea yeah right? yeah yeah and um i i'm kind of like disorganized right now what are the neighbor countries of ukraine um that's okay should i look it up i'm just working on it right now sorry for my um no oh, that's okay well while you're saying that i'm gonna yeah so ukraine so slovakia has a little bit of an attachment romania they're not so organized in in regards to um in regards to the rescues but poland is very organized belarus is very organized and moldavia is very organized so i would say let's support those neighbor countries that can actually absorb those dogs can bring over them and support the families as well then sending the money to ukraine and we don't have access to a bank you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah um what was I just going to say? Uh, oh, Gaetan, when you were talking about uh, the uh, the um, donation to different organizations, mm -hmm. the issue that really always has been, and it's not just with the U Ukraine, is that when you donate to an organization, if they can't back it up, and they can't say, okay, here's what we accomplished with the money that you donated. And here's mm -hmm. the dog that you saved. And here's the medical bills that were incurred. And here's the uh, the actual documentation of everything. If they can't provide that, then that's a big red flag. You have to look mm -hmm. at that. And yeah. I, I, I'm serious when I say that I've been getting so many organizations that I've never even heard of that oh, even Airbnb is going to do this and everybody do they really so i'm not really sure that there is really legit how do you legitimize a new organization that we've never heard of before so yeah maybe we can be helping maybe this group that's going to be coming on next week they can help with that they're Definitely. in yeah you know <laughs> because they are a non-for-profit and they're collecting donations so uh and and you know and they document everything so you can see them in action you know that they're doing this work which is mm -hmm. really exciting yeah uh, to see that they are saving lives mm -hmm. so um so one all. thing that i know is the international fund of animal welfare 
um, okay. has right now over 1,100 dogs in their care. Okay. Um, anything else that I see here that's legitimate? Okay. Um, well, European Union gets organized right now. So we... And we have Romanian... We have groups that are actually... And let me share this link with you so you can post it. So we have actually accurate feedback. I'm going to share with you in the private chat. So okay. this organization actually offers feedback to which organizations are legit. Okay. So verified is in Switzerland, in France, um, Belgium, Denmark, um, Ireland, Netherlands. So everywhere these refugees can go, they their dogs being be taken care of. Okay, good. Okay. Right. For animal it says for animal good. shelters, rescues, and wildlife facilities who urgently need support, please email that organization and humanitarian support. And pet information has been able to verify entering Switzerland, the dogs and cats brought by their owners may enter Switzerland in exceptional cases. So Switzerland, France. Belgium, Denmark, Ireland, Netherlands, oh, excellent. Excellent. Um, in even India and Germany, Italy, Finland, Romania, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Lithuania, Lit Latvia, Estonia, Czech Republic, all these countries, if you go there with your pet, you've been being taken care of. And so you don't have to have vaccinations, papers and all this stuff. You have a special status to get there, to get with your dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, any final thoughts? I, I realize we're a little off track today, and I know that a lot of people have been because of what's going on in the world. I can only, from my side, I can only say that let, let, let's pray that that this ends very quickly and that we all are safe. And, of course, the people of Ukraine will never be they'll never be the same. They've lost everything, and our hearts go out to them. So and any any other final thoughts before we close the show? Well, uh, my thought is uh, this war cannot be win. One. Yeah. And it's futile to have this uh, attack on Ukraine. And the I hope this will be over uh, the, as soon as possible. And uh, what I look, what I appreciate at this moment is the reaction of the international community to look at the situation and uh, almost uh, unanimously uh, un unanimously oppose this war and uh, even i hope that eventually this this thing will be uh, over and the sooner would be the better yeah. for everybody okay and Ro roman before yeah, we go don't, don't disappear yet yeah, you know, I had to close the door because my dog went like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, um, right. I feel one thing we can say is this thing has to stop. Not because of the dogs and not because of my dog making so much noise in the background. Hey, friend, here. There <clears throat> I saved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to make sure that we are aware of what's happening. And it happens for no really good reasons. Exactly. And if we have to donate our time and our money, we should do that in organizations that are really clear and how you call it, transparent about their interactions and have a good track record. Right. Right. And I think um, we should go with next show that we have more information about what's going on because that will get more accurate. Right. Like. Uh, from the field information mm -hmm. here yeah okay well thank you everyone for watching the show and please please watch us next week when we go in depth about uh saving the dogs in ukraine okay thank you have a good week everyone bye thank you nevertheless happy yeah. st patrick's day yeah, happy st patrick's I day enjoy bye-bye thank you bye-bye <laughs>